Hello and welcome guys, this is yet another video by me Thomas and this is another one of my software development tutorials. This here is on PHP and something very simple that I've got asked multiple times now, not only by uh, co-workers but also by other people here on YouTube. And it was regarding some software projects I had in the past, which not all of you may know, and I've this video is not going to go about them, but they use a system where you can have templates. So as you can see from this website, it's just a simple website which says hello, hello world. And what is so special about this? Well, first of all, let's look at the template, which is this HTML file. And as you can see, I have placeholders for title and text. Now, what my script allows me to do is I can pull in a class. As you can see, I set it up and then I instantiate a new object from the class. And then I can assign values to these variables. And this is very neat. Why is that very neat? Because you can, first of all, of course, pretty much have all of your code in code and all of your HTML and HTML, which basically means you have uh, separated the two perfectly. You don't have any any APHP whatsoever in your HTML, and this is really nice, isn't it? And uh, another thing is that you can have a multilingual system. For example, this can, of course, be the German version. And as you can see, I didn't change anything in, uh, in the uh, HTML. But if we go back into a browser, oops, not into a file browser, but if we go back into a browser and refresh, as you can see, it's German. And uh, yeah, the title has changed also, as you can see, because I've used the same variable here. So now I'm going to tell you that we're going to accomplish this in 42 lines of code, which is this class. But I will go ahead and empty all my files, and then we're going to speak about on how to make our own templating system. Okay, so first of all, I think I might introduce you to the folder structure, which in this case is another subfolder with my templates inside, it's just called templates, and I have a test.tpl.html in there, which is basically this script. And here we have the index.php, which is my uh, script that is launched when I go into my web browser. Then we have our template.class.php, which basically does all the magic. Now, before you program your own template system, what we have to do is we have to make some notes. We have to think about stuff. First of all, what kind of style do you want to use for setting up variables? Some of you might have seen a code like this um, for setting up uh, uh, blocks or, or, or variables uh, in Python. If you want to do it like that, it's possible. You could also have text like, um, like so. Um, I will use the same variable name. And my personal preference is to have um, basically everything in curly braces and then capitalized. I just like this style and it's very, very awesome, <laughs> I do think. And uh, what uh, about that uh, is that it's very unique. You can identify capitalized text very easy and curly braces are also easy to find. Well, same goes for the other two, but I just prefer those. And now what we also need to think about is how are we going to routine it? The way I did is it is I instantiate a new object of the class and then load in a file. So our methods will be uh, or will be load. Then we want to assign values in my case, and then we want to show the template. But what if we didn't want to explicitly show and just said, hey, uh, this is automatically going to show. Well, we can also realize it, but we do have to do it differently. So as you can see from those quick notes, we first need to think what we want to accomplish. And then we need to think about how we can design it, test it, and there we go. Okay, so now we're finally going into software development. To start this off, we are going in our template or class to PHP. And the first thing that we want to do is I want to create a class and it's called templates. Uh, or template, to be honest. Um, here we are, template, it's a class. And in here, we will going to be having certain stuff, which is basically two variables that are very important, which first of all is var assigned values, which is an array of all the variables that I'm going to have. And you'll see why we need that later on. 
The other thing is our template. This is basically the thing that we put together that we put in our HTML code as well as the replacement stuff. And now what we need to do is we need to create a couple of functions. The first one is going to be the construct function. And if you didn't know that, uh, basically the construct function runs whenever you make a new object from that class. So it will automatically run. And if you've wondered why you need to have braces uh, in your, in your uh, or brackets in your uh, instantiation of a new object, that is why. You basically give the construct arguments. It's always there. It's just an empty function like so. And, that, and it takes usually no variables whatsoever. And that is why you have those brackets, basically, because of the construct. And now what we want to also have is the uh, function called assign. And I won't have any variables right now. And the last function would be show. Okay, that about that. And now what we want to have is we want to uh, go ahead and uh, uh, basically save this up because this is our bare bones for our whole template class. And uh, as you can see, we only have 21 lines of code and I can tell you that we are also going to set to have another 20 lines and we are finished with this. Now in the index.php, we want to go ahead and first of all think on how we're going to set this up. Well, first of all, I want to require once, which makes sure that this file is only included once into my project. Um, and I want to require it because require throws an exception and dies. All PHP developers should know what a die function is. Basically makes your script exit, exit with code one, which means there was an error. So if you have, you know, for example, a server and you look into your war messages, it will appear there as an error. And that is very, very helpful where an, in where an include just goes ahead and uh, basically throws a notice to your users. And that is very, very bad style and very, very bad habit. Of course, no, none of those failures should happen. You should have your includes that way so you don't have an error. No customer nor you should see an error. But I want to require that. And what I also want to do is I want to define a constant because I don't always want to type in the template path and maybe the template path is going to change. So we say template path equals to the templates folder. That way, with changing one constant, we can change the whole folder. And I will show you that later on. Now what we can do is we can instantiate a new template object by uh, basically having a variable, which is called template in my case. I want to create a new instance of the template function. And to show you what the construct does, I will now just uh, basically enter in an echo hello world. And as you will be able to see, it will run. There we are. And you've seen I've not supplied anything. But what I can do now is I can say I want to supply a variable and I want to spit that out. So I can say echo war. And as you can see, I've not entered anything into here, but I will do that and I will say hello. And this is our first parameter in this construct function and it will fill up and boom, baby, there we are. So now you know what the construct is for. But this is not what we want to do, right? So what we want to do is we want to work with our construct basically first. And we're going to have a variable called path. And this is going to be empty at first. And then we want to check if it is not empty, we want to continue. If the variable path is not empty, then we want to go ahead and find out if our template file that we gave it exists and if not we want to throw an error then it's going to have if file exists path then we want to say this tpl equals to file get contents of our path which basically is the file name of course but i call this path because it's mostly the path to the file and else we're going to throw an error Why 
Very good. Okay, so now we can try this out, of course. And uh, we can try this by using our function uh, templates path dot in our file. In this case, test.tpl.html. Now we can refresh in the browser and you will see no error. But if I would change this to something else, by removing, for example, the extension, you will see there is an error. And this is very nice because now our templating system tells us that uh, we have an error. What you should always keep in mind though is you should always note where the error is coming from. In this case, it's a template error. I would write that in bold because I really like bold stuff. There we are. And now we can refresh. And Oops. And I think I did change it to the correct thing, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay, so now let's just do that again. And bam, baby, now we know it's the templating system that is giving us an error. Of course, I want to change this to the correct thing back again. And we should be able to now get the template because if I were to say that it should echo out um, the TPL, this TPL, it should give us the template back and it does so we have the template finally assigned to this value now what are we going to do with that well we will see then we need to get another function sorted out which is the assign function well what is the assign function it basically takes all the strings that we want to replace basically so uh, how are we going to do that well first of all we're going to have two parameters for this, which is one, the first thing, and second, the replace string. And uh, now what we can do, if not empty, the search string, because it shouldn't be empty. Um, search string. Uh, then we can basically go ahead and assign this. This assigned values which is our array if you remembered we have it right up here right there we will add to it a basically string to upper s2 string to upper um search string basically and what that will do is it will create a new key with every letter capitalized by search string we can test it out later on but i'll tell you when we are there okay now we want to assign of course a value to it which is the replace string and that's it for the assign function it's very simple it's very basic but I want to add for debugging person uh, purposes since I want to say that we want to var dump uh, the this assigned values so we can see what's going on in the array now you will see that if I refresh the page nothing's uh, basically put out and I don't actually know why do I have to echo that for that to do something well of course I'm really stupid I have to run the function in order for it to 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 do anything so to do that we say um, template and assign values or assign as I called it and then we need to specify replace a string for example let's say our title as before and we want to assign the value hello to it and now we, we have that finished we can refresh the page and what we'll see is that in our array we have a new string or we have a new uh, pair consisting out of the key title which has the uh, value hello and we can of course repeat that process for another string let's say um, test just to be very original and uh, let's replace it with um, test wow we're so original today oh my god and as you can see we have now two keys and two values the first one is well why does it happen oh yeah i know that because every time you run the function it will also run the wire dump um but actually we just have to look at that part right here it is because yeah here we do have a key title value hello and a key test and the value test so it's just like we want it to be or like i want it to be and now what we can do is well we just leave that there for now and what we can now do is first of all remove this line because it's very stupid to have it right now and now we need to work on the show function which is the most important part to this template right templating system right now and we want to do it like so 
we're going to now replace stuff in our uh, template that we've saved before. And to save resources, we first want to count off if the array that we've made, which is this assigned values, has more than no values, because in, in default, it's going to be zero, as we instantiated an empty array. So keep that in mind, this is to save processing power a bit. I don't know if that really scales well, I just came up with this system in like five minutes, um, in order to have someone's problems fixed. And uh, yeah, so basically what we're going to do is we're saying uh, for each variable as key value, in this case, this assigned values as key value, we're going to have, um, of course, some very nice code, which is going to be that we want to replace something in the, oh my God, I can't type today, in the this assigned values variable, we're going to replace, which is going to happen, well, I'm sorry, in the this TPL variable, which is our template that we saved before, we want to replace with the string replace function. Oh my God, string replace function. We're going to replace a key, which is existing out of three parameters. And two of them are going to be our delimiters for our variable. As we've said before, we're going to use those brackets. And the other one is going to be the key. And if you remember from a couple of seconds ago, I've told you that the key was basically what we've assigned in this function. And then we capitalized it, right? Okay, so we want to replace everything in the delimiters with the key with the value and our subject that we want to replace this out of is of course also this TPL. And that's it. And now what we want to do is we want to tidy it up a bit and go down here and say echo this TPL. Now we have the answer to everything, which is 42. And this means our script is totally perfect. And now of course, I have to look for the variable that we used, we use title and text, not test. And now we can show the content, which is basically run the, uh, the show function. And that's it. And now we can refresh in the browser. And we will see that our output looks perfect. Okay, guys, this was a test of a new screencasting solution that I'm trying out right now. And I hope you liked the video, and I need to work on miking and speaking a bit. And as I said, I hope you don't mind any mistakes in this. And see you in another video. Goodbye. I hope you can use this little snippet. It will help you out. See ya.